It's inevitable if you've been running for any period of time, but especially if you've been running for as long as me, a couple decades now, you're gonna end up with a ton of these race numbers. And you're trying to figure out, what the hell do I do with all these race numbers? I keep them around. I've got probably the vast majority, I would say 90 plus percent of the race numbers I've put on over the last 20 years. Um, but they don't just have to sit in a box like mine. You can do a few things with them. So we're going to talk about what to do with your race pib numbers today on this episode of Runner's High. So I've got a ton of these things, and you may as well. Um, I'll probably interrupt myself and tell you a little bit about them as the story goes on here, or as the video goes on. I don't know, I'm talking about stories. But one of the things that's the probably easiest thing to do is simply just put them up on your wall. I know that some of the guys that came before me when I ran in college had a cross-country house. Basically, they rented a house near campus and they put all of their numbers, everybody's numbers on the walls, so the whole house was just covered in numbers, which is a pretty cool experience, but even if you're not part of a team, I've seen people take their uh, you know dedicated workout room or their pain cave, depending on whether you wanna call it that, and they put up their numbers on their wall, and it's kind of motivation and reminder of all these races that I've run. You know, looking through this box, uh, you know, I. I start remembering different races, some races I don't remember. Um, there's been so many of them, but there's so many pieces of paper in this box, and that's not even all the races I've done. Good. Kansas City, been doing that race since it started for the last, well, 11, 12 years now. Canceled this year. Duathlon, Shawnee Mission. I hate that race, not doing that one again. 70.3 Eagle Man. This is now a cursed number. This is when I broke my collarbone. This is the coolest number I have. It's actually a placard that goes on your bike. The damn try. Santa Cruz, the race that almost didn't happen. Brew to Brew, Relay Race. Claremont, Draft Legal Challenge. One of the only bib numbers I have with my actual name on it. Now we're getting into college. KC Metro Championships, now we're in high school. First time KC Metro Championships. My coach took a special um, trip just to take me and only me to this race because it was too big for the rest of my teammates. Um, it isn't necessarily a brag on me so much as it is uh, a thank you to my coach for investing in me and my running career future, whatever it could be called um, for what it's worth. So thank you Coach Whaley for that one. So many numbers. It's good to remember where you've been and the things that you've done to give you a little bit of motion from t motivation from time to time when you're thinking about you know what's next um, if you have any kind of negative thoughts creep in you can be reminded hey I, you know I've done these things I can do more things whatever it is running or otherwise um, so just put them on the wall is a good place to start if you don't know what to do now if you have some prized uh, numbers that go along with some medals uh, I've got any number of <laughs> medals here from finishing various races, things falling out here. Um, you can always pair those together, put them together in a light box. Costs a little bit more money, um, but if you're gonna do things like uh, Iron Man or you get like you know your Iron Man World Athlete uh, tokens and stuff, I know Iron Man offer them, offers them at the races. Uh, but you can always do them yourself. If you want to Google light box, um, we'll try to keep a picture of that so you can see what we're talking about. But that's a good way to commemorate a particular performance or maybe your first of something, a stepping stone, a milestone. Um, it doesn't make sense, in my opinion, to try to do it for every single race if you continue to stay active um, because you'll cover your, cover your entire house with light boxes. But it's an awesome way to remember what to do with your uh, you know, the, the time that you had for that thing, whether that's your first race, the first time you finished, the first time you placed in your age group, the first time you won a race, or, you know, whatever it is, that PR that you've been training for for a long time, if that's a special moment for you, that's a great way to do it. Just, you know, stick it in a light box and have that on the wall so you can remember that as a special moment. Now, if you want to get crafty, 
Um, and that's for the crafty people that are watching this. If you're crafty, um, you can take these and make them into a scrapbook. This is the basic thing. It's a way to organize them, and unlike my uh, completely unorganized box of them here, um, that's only in rough order of when they actually occurred, uh, you can keep them in a scrapbook, pair them with the photos that were taken at the race, either by the race organizers or if you had family and friends there that took photos, um, they can kind of remember the day. Write something down. If you're doing it as you go along, it would be incredibly tough for me to do it now, 20 years in. Um, but if you're doing it as you go along, you could even do it as a running journal. You know, put the bib in. How did you feel that day? What did you do? You know, what was your experience? And then be able to look back on that. Here's the race bib number. Here's how I felt about that day. Here's my challenges. And come back to that, both as it's good to come back to a race journal and also a way to commemorate and save that race bib as a piece of that moment in history. Um, but along with the crafty side, if you're not so particular about trying to keep them intact, um, I like to keep them intact, so that this isn't my particular thing, but you can basically use them as paper mache for anything. You can make them into uh, paperweights or coasters um, using paper mache glue and just you know, putting them over items so that they're hanging around. Again, much like the light box, you're probably not gonna wanna do that for absolutely everyone. I mean, I've got, I, I can't even count off the top of my head here. If I don't have at least 100 bib numbers here, uh, I'd be surprised. So I obviously don't want 100 paperweights with bib numbers uh, roaming around my house, but when you're looking for different things to do, and you don't want to just do light boxes, and you maybe you don't want to do that scrapbook, that's another way to look at it. You can also, if you want to get crafty, learn some origami, turn them into things. Uh, the paper crane is obviously the you know, really popular way to go. You can hang them on a Christmas tree, keep them around as ornaments that way if you want to do that. I've also seen people talk about, if I can untangle one of these, here we go, um, this bad boy. For like medals, I know we're talking about bibs, but you probably got medals too if you've done plenty of road races. Um, taking the medals, taking the ribbons off, and then making these into Christmas ornaments. Again, if you do too many of them, you're probably gonna knock over your Christmas tree uh, because you have too many medals. But, you know, another way to go with the medals is just simply hang them on a metal rack on the wall. People do that. That's much easier to do than knocking over your Christmas tree. Plus, you can have them out all the time and you don't have to get rid of the ribbons, which are kind of nice as well. The last and easiest thing to do with them, aside from holding on to them like a hoarder like me, uh, in a box where they collect dust, if you're not putting them to use anywhere else, then simply recycle them. Sometimes it's good as a practice to learn to let go of things and not be so attached to whatever it is. These in particular are my memories. It's been um, such a big part of my life that at least for now in this section of my life, maybe later on I'll feel differently. Um, they are you know, emotionally intertwined with my identity. Here I am on this show, Runner's High, sharing with you my experience. And this, you know, this is half this giant <laughs> stack of papers is kind of hard to see is you know my two decades you know 60 percent of my life um and identity wrapped up into little pieces of paper so they're important to me to hang around even if i don't see them all the time i do get to add to them from time to time but you can take them recycle them let them go and practice that ability to let them go um, i do that with other things in my life haven't quite got around to my race bibs just yet, uh, but maybe I will one of these days. So, is there something that you do with your race bibs I did not cover in this episode? Share them with me, share them with everybody else down in the comments below. Let us know what do you do with your race bibs. I'll see you next time on the next episode of Runner's Eye.